Hi, I'm John Bollinger. I'm going to show you how to put together your pedal board so you can optimize the tone of your pedals and the ease of use. Now, believe it or not, there's a lot more to building a pedal board than simply taking your pedals, slapping some Velcro on them, sticking them to a uh, pedal board, and daisy chaining them together. So we're going to go through a couple of the main, the main issues that trip up a lot of people. The first one being pedal order. The second one is the cables you use to connect your pedals. And the final bit is the power that gives your pedals their juice. So let's start with pedal order. There are approximately 10 different categories of pedals, and the kind of music you play will dictate what sort of pedals you're drawn to. If you're an indie rocker or an experimentalist, you're gonna be a bit more adventuresome. Players like that tend to use multiple fuzzes, distortions, multiple delays, weird swirly things, whatever. If you're a blues rocker, your pedal board is going to be a bit more stark. You might go with an overdrive, a boost, and a wah. Or if you're a metal player, you're probably going to have a noise gate in there, a distortion pedal, a wah, and maybe some subtle chorus in. The great thing is you can build whatever you want out of your pedal board to get those sounds that are in your head out. That's what's so great about pedals. So you probably have spent months or even years collecting the right pedals you want. So let's talk about the order you're going to wire them in. Because believe it or not, something as simple as putting one different pedal in front of another can make the difference between loving your tone and hating it. Now, a lot of players insist that their way is the way but there really is no right or wrong. In fact, you might find that by going against conventional wisdom, you can unlock some sort of unique tone that really gets across what you want to express. So bear that in mind. But let's start with this order that most players have good luck with. You're gonna start with your tuner, then noise gate, and then a fuzz or lo-fi bit crusher pedal a wah, a compressor, a pitch shifter, and this could be anything from a simple octave box to a harmonizer, an overdrive or boost, a distortion, a modulation pedal, in this case we're using a chorus, delay, reverb, tremolo, a boost that can increase the overall volume going to your amp, and finally, a looper. Putting a looper at the end allows you to loop uh, the effects, the affected signals. So you want to loop something distorted or affected, you can and build from there. I encourage you to experiment with the order because you might find something that works better with your particular pedals. For instance, Jimi Hendrix would run his fuzz after his wah. And although unconventional, nobody's going to argue that that wasn't an epic tone. So again, just kind of play around. The thing is, there's no standardized pedals, so they're gonna react differently. Different manufacturers kind of work differently with different pedals, so experiment. Take your time, try it all, see what works best. If you're not happy with your tone, then try something else. Now that you know your pedal order, it's time to arrange them on your pedal board. Space is always gonna be at a premium on a pedal board and you want to make sure everything fits begin before you begin wiring. So, and not only do they have to fit, but in addition to that, it has to be ergonomically easy to use. For instance, pedals that you use often, that you're going to hit often or really work, you need them kind of in the easiest place to reach. For instance, a wah pedal, when you engage that, it's not like you hit it once and leave it. You're, you're rocking it, so I would always have that front. Also, there's times when you want to hit two pedals at the same time. For instance, maybe your overdrive and your distortion, if you put those somewhere easy to reach in front where you can hit two pedals at the same time, then you have the option of like a little bit of dirt, a lot of dirt, a ton of dirt. So it's a matter of kind of making it all work. And you might have to get creative it's a little bit like a game of Tetris. You might have to turn something sideways or whatever to make it fit. So here, with the magic of time-lapse photography, I'll show you our options here. 
Okay, now that we've got our pedals in order, I'm going to talk about something that is equally important, but often overlooked, and that's your cable in. Now, it's tempting after spending all this time and money on buying the ultimate pedals to save a little bit of money by getting cheap cables or using whatever you have handy. But the truth is, a cheap cable can completely undermine the tone of your amazing rig. So it's worth putting the time, money, and energy into finding the right cables. Now, the main thing that we're talking about is it's not about buying uh, cables made of like precious metals or anything like that. What it comes down to is something called capacitance. And not to get all scientific, but essentially capacitance is a cable's ability to carry the entire signal. And the rule of thumb is the lower the capacitance, the more of the true signal you're going to hear. Cheap cables will have a high capacitance. So they're going to make your signals lose treble, sound muddy and dark. Ideally, you're going to find a brand that has a low capacitance and is still in your budget. And there's plenty of options. We're going with this uh, Patch Factory um, because it has a low capacitance and we can cut the cables to length, which brings me to the next point. Cable length is really important. Every, the further your signal has to travel, the more loss of signal you're going to have. So ideally, you're going to cut those cables as, as short as possible. That's why I like the option of making them, to, uh, making them for your pedal board. There are a lot of pre-made cables, you know, pre-made links, they're great. And if that works for you, perfect. But for this option, we're going to cut them right to length, so we're going to make them as short as possible. Another consideration is the, run, uh, the cable running in and out. You should kind of keep length in mind there as well. If you need a lot of uh, a long cable for whatever you're doing on stage, well then of course use it. But the, the least amount of cabling you can use, the better off you're going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to, once we have our pedal order, we're going to cut cables to fit, uh, be, to string them all together with as little cabling as possible. So here goes. I'm not going to have to, you're not going to have to watch the whole thing, but in short, I'm going to measure, cut, and apply. Now a side note, when you're arranging your pedals, make sure you use some industrial strength Velcro. Your pedals are going to take a beating on the road and you want to make sure they're going to, they stay in place. Because once they start moving, that undermines your cabling and your power and everything else. And try and Velcro them once you know where they're going to live. Because the more times you pick it up and, and put them down and remove them, it kind of undermines the integrity of the, of the Velcro. Here's another great tip. When you build your cables, Test each cable right after you build it, because there's nothing worse than cutting all your cables, wiring up your board, and then not getting any tone. Then you have to go back and check every one. Okay, you may have noticed that there were a few changes as we went, but tweaking is part of the process. Because when you're, the, when you're wiring it together, you may think, oh, you know what, this is really better there. I need a little bit more room here. But that's part of the fun. And a great thing about this pedal board too, we've left some room for additions down the road. So you can continue the tweakery as long as you want. Okay, last step, but certainly not the least. We have to deal with power. Now at this point, it might be tempting to just find a wall wart and daisy chain everything together. And all the lights might actually come on, but more than likely your pedals will not be optimi optimized. They're going to be kind of buzzy, they're going to be noisy, they may not sound right. So it's worth it taking the time to find the right kind of power. There's a lot of companies that make these power bricks that are specialized for, power, for pedal power. And ideally, the very best ones have isolated jacks. An isolated jack means that the jack provides enough power specifically for that output and it doesn't share with the other ones. Now, that being the case, you can take an isolated jack 
and run it to several different pedals if you need to. But your best bet is running one per. Um, we have 14 pedals here, so we had to go with something pretty big. We went with the Voodoo Lab Mondo, which we mounted beforehand underneath the, underneath the uh, pedal board. That way, it saved us all this real estate up top, and the, uh, the pedal power is, is screwed in with brackets, so it's not going anywhere. You really don't want your power moving, because once that moves, it undermines the integrity of the connection, and you're gonna have shorts and problems like that. So, it's gonna take a bit of math, find out what your power needs are, and find a supplier that will cover all those needs. Now, we're, we're in luck right here because everything is nine volt, but that may not be the case for you if you use a lot of like digital pedals, things like Strymon or Line 6 or TC Electronics. Um, complicated digital pedals are less forgiving about power than say analog pedals. In fact, you might find on things like, like overdrives or compression that they might sound better if you run it into a power supply that offers sag, meaning it'll feel a little bit like a dying battery. That works with analog, doesn't work with digital. So make sure you provide your pedals with accurate power. So uh, another thing to think about is when you're connecting them all, again, you want, you kind of want to minimize, you want a clean board. We're going to run everything from underneath and run it individually to each one, arranging each, uh, each cable in the right length. So you don't have super long ones going to short places like that. Ideally, they usually, usually bricks give you different options. So use the long ones when you need it, use the short ones when you need it. Just l minimize the length of your cables. So again, I'll show you as we wire it up. Okay, once you have it all together, just experiment a little bit and see how it sounds. If it's not quite there, try moving things around, try changing cables, whatever. But keep in mind those three basic things we mentioned, order, cables, and power. And in the future, if you have any do-it-yourself kind of suggestions, let us know and we'll give it a try. You can leave it in the comments at the bottom of this video. Thanks very much, this is John Bollinger. Till next time. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.